All right, so we have this. 96 Easy Go TXT, 36 volt. Just put new batteries in it for the customer uh, probably a month and a half, two months ago. And the complaint is now it doesn't move. You can hear solenoids activating. So we're going to check the solenoid, we're going to check the forward reverse switch. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking the covers off. Because I want to check everything I can. So we're going to see here. The controller cover has three creates bolts. Well, in this case, this one only has two. Or usually they have four. And there's two. Ooh, smells like melting in here. Hmm. So there's two. There's one here, one here on the top. This is the top side that faces up. And this is the bottom side where the cables come out, and there's two on the bottom. Oh, wow. Okay, well I found the problem right away. Looks like we're going to be putting a forward reverse switch in this. So you guys should be able to see the problem here. Have you spotted it yet? The forward reverse switch is getting quite warm. You can tell by how these terminals are all charred basically. I mean, you can see how dark it is compared to these ones up here. Uh, so we're going to change this forward reverse switch and we're going to have to re-terminate some, we're going to have to replace some wires it looks like. Look at this one down here. That one down there is completely melted and broken off. That got so hot it actually melted the copper. Um, so yeah, there's our problem. We're going to change the forward reverse switch. A little tech tip for you guys, if you're dis disconnecting terminals that have more than one wire attached, Use a zip tie through all of the ring terminals like so. Zip tie them together. And then you'll never have to forget where they go. And I like to always put the terminal nut back on so we don't lose it. But there you go. You'll never, as long as that zip tie holds, you won't lose those wires and which posts they go together with. So, a little tech tip for you. Just so it's not all bare copper and hanging in my way here. See how that got hot. That got really hot. It actually melted and molded, molten, got molten on the end there. Oh, even comes with a new backup buzzer. switches. We just have to transfer everything over to the new one. First, we got to get the old one out. One thing I wish these uh, PB blaster stuff would work. in all orientations because it doesn't. It doesn't work in any other orientation but straight up and down basically. Okay, these are 7 sixteenths. Oh, they are tight too. Bump it up a little bit here. Okay, I can bump it up to a 
3 8 drive, just to give me a little bit more arm torque here. And with this set of wires up, I'm going to use the batteries to my advantage for leverage. The switch comes with a new bracket, but I find this to be easier just to get in there. Remove the physical switch. Okay. Oh. Wow, that's really tight. All years of sitting in here and rusting. I strongly believe in anything that's around batteries or caustic fluids, acid. Um, let's see if that holes up there. Gasoline, oil, hydraulic fluid, any type of anything like that. It should always be stainless steel. This hardware should always be stainless steel, but it's not, so it's going to be hot. Careful. Okay. All right. So now we have the switch freed. So what we got to do is we have to remove this nut here that connects the this arm for the forward reverse switch. We got to disconnect the nut. But these aren't really on here that tight, so it's not a big deal. It's coming off. Wiggle and I'll take it right out. Leave it rest for that for a minute. And plug your blue. Good there. And plug your orange. Good there. And plug your plug your ground. You're good there. There's a good chance. <laughs> there's a really good chance that these are not going to come off. We're going to try to take them off first. This one here, I know we're going to replace the terminal anyway, so it don't matter. Nope, we don't care about that one because it's broken. Ooh, actually, wow. That, ooh, that one's even really loose there. Now that explains why these things got hot. They're, they weren't even tight. I don't care about that one. It's very easy to get these crossed, so I'm just taking the nuts off first, and then we're going to reinstall them. You can see, as we're going to use this hardware, we're not reusing this bracket. We're going to reuse the one that's in there, and we'll use this new one here and the hardware. Let's reinstall the switch in its location. Started. No wire caught on this or something. That's not letting me. No. Yes, there is. Finger tight. 
first. Okay, and then we're gonna top ones. That one. That one. That one. And then we have to just create the new end for there. We're gonna do. Blue. Oh, I think we might need to. Yeah, Resqueeze these because they're a bit loose. And we'll do blue. one orange and then we have black, which is going to go right to the backup beeper, since this one has a, doesn't need the ground post, it goes right to the thingy, we're good there. Loose too. Tighten that up. Mm, raining again. Big surprise. That completes our small wiring connections. We can't reuse the nuts that came off of the original switch because they're shot, basically. So I'm gonna replace them with some, these are basically stud bat bolts, or sorry, stud nuts off of batteries. You know, batteries that I send for recycling. I keep all of the nuts. These are 5 16 18 thread, and they fit right over these copper terminals. So we're going to use these. And they're in great shape still, so why, why throw them away? Reuse them. I'm going to replace that one. That one we can tighten. Let's just put this one on for the moment. We're not going to go past there. Put this one on so we don't lose it. Okay, so I got this jack stand. I got this uh, 5 16 pole, 6 gauge wire. What I like to do typically is I like to take this hammer tool and I put the terminal right inside, just like this. And then I'll take my wire, put it in, set it on the hard surface. Don't ever do this on the cart, I'm just using a jack stand. I typically would do this on a wooden bench. Give it one, so that will lock it, and then two. And there you have it. There's a nice crimp. Nice mechanical and electrical connection. All right, so that completes that terminal. We can now install it. still enough wire there to have enough slack so we're good there now we got to change out this terminal here 
This could be a little tricky when they're down inside the cart, so you're going to have to actually do it inside the cart. There's no way around it. Cut it off. This is where it gets a little tricky. Is Getting this. Okay. Since this wire is down inside the cart here, it's going to be a little harder to do this. All right, since I'm really limited on slack here, I'm going to give this a little bit of a bite so it can't fall off while I'm trying to manipulate this here. Because I really need to get a positive contact this like so and it's okay to do that you know just bite it with the pliers okay now we got it in there okay I'm actually gonna redo it up on the frame here just to get a better there we go better. Perfect. All right, that termination is done. Slip it over. Hand tighten. Now we can tighten these down. Remember, you don't have to go gahunga tight because they're only copper studs. But you don't want them to be loose either. Because if they're loose, you're going to run into the same problem as we had before. But if you got to get in there and Get it as tight as you can by hand so you're not fumbling with the ratchet. Okay, there we go. Still have to tighten the switch up too to its frame, but for now we're pretty close. Reverse handle on. Oops. Make sure it's positioned properly. So, okay. Actually moves pretty good. Sometimes these can be a little tricky to get started.
They're seven or eleven, ten and eleven millimeter. They're not even the same size, which that doesn't really. In all reality, it doesn't matter. Just in the assist department. It's easier to get the ratchet in here than it is to get the wrench. Okay. There's a replace forward reverse switch. We're now going to reconnect our battery Connections here, we'll cut that zip tie off. I'm going to cut this zip tie off. I have to re route this wire here as I got it hung up here and oops, pulled off the orange wire. Side before I hook anything else up, I want to test it. Okay, ow, <laughs> I think it's safe to say that works. Wow, that backup beeper is loud. That's how they do that. So there's that. That's the main power. This is charger. This is lights. Safe to say, I think it works. Because holy shit, that was loud. Okay, so now I'm just going to tighten down our positive connection on the battery. Carefully. Okay, good and tight without going too tight. And just to retest with my finger on the back up. Okay, and forward. Perfect. Sounds good. Sounds really good. All right, put the covers back on and job done. We're good now. I was just being stupid. Okay. Forward reverse switch is done. Now, slide that down in. Solenoid is good, obviously, because it's moving. said touching okay and there we go good okay that is job done forward reverse switches in controller covers back on you know everything's all rusted usually after they get hot like that that's when they start to get rusted out. But we'll strip the copper out of this, throw the plastic out, and throw the scrap iron out. Alright. That's, that's job done, guys. 
on to the next one.